uh, just comfort where comfort needs to be and uplift where upliftment needs to take place as well. Um, I want to tell a bit just very briefly about my own personal background. As I said, I'm a black American, right? I accepted Islam when I was 18 years old. Um, and what our community in America needs to understand is that racism against blacks is deeply embedded in our society and alive and well in 2020 hasn't gone anywhere. Um, and that's very important for us to understand because unless we start unpacking and understanding and seeing racism against black Americans in this country, we won't understand truly what's going on in this country at this time and why there's so much anger, why there's so much protest and why everything is going on the way it is. Um, I want to share something with you guys that happened to me. Um, I haven't shared this and, and subhanAllah, I never really noticed this or reflected on this incident I'm going to share with you until the last three days. It just something, you know, something you experience, but then it pops up back in your mind. I had just become Muslim. I had just become Muslim. Um, and the only reason I remember I was actually Muslim, funny thing here is because I was wearing leather socks. So, you know, you guys might get that joke It's whatever, but that's the only reason I really remember that I was Muslim because I remember I had leather socks on and there's no way I'm going to be wearing leather socks except if I was Muslim. So I'm at home and all of a sudden I see sirens outside of my house and I look out the front window and as I open the window, I see a police officer jumping out of his car and re running to the car in front and yanking this young man, African-American man out of the car. And the car was still moving. The guy was still in his seatbelt. I mean, this is this is typical, typical stuff they do. And so he's yanking him out the car. And this this thing dawned on me. I mean, I had just become Muslim. And I said to myself, I can't sit back and just watch this. This is not what my new Islam has taught me. I can't do this. And so I go outside. Right. I go outside and I'm, I'm not prepared to go anywhere. I'm going in front of my house. I mean, I literally only had my, I think only my leather socks on. I remember it just clearly. So I go outside my house and I stand at a distance, right? And as things calm down a little bit, I politely walk closer and I say, excuse me, officers. There's multiple officers uh, for this one individual, you know, five different police cars, which is part of the over-policing of our communities, which is something we're going to talk about in the coming, uh, uh, within the coming hour, inshallah. Um, what happens is, I walk over and I say, excuse me, officer, I would like to take your badge number because you were a bit rough with this individual and I want to report this. The moment I said that, brothers and sisters, the moment I said that, he said, oh, really? You want to do what? I said, I would like to report this. He said, come here. He grabbed me right away, threw me down and he cuffed me. And here I am sitting on the curb next to this guy who I don't know anything about, but all I know is that no human being should be abused in that way. And this is something I think we need to write down and take away from this, that many times people will start to now, what was the person up to before they were killed by the police? What were they doing? Did they agitate the system at all? Did they agitate? Did they provoke? Nothing calls for another life to be taken like that. There is no way. And we've got to the point where just the media and different things will make us feel like, subhanAllah, oh, he provoked them a bit. He provoked him. And, and if you think I'm, I'm exaggerating, the city I'm from, Buffalo, New York, where this took place. Buffalo, New York, by the way, is a, a city with major systemic problems when it comes to racism um, and, and, and the zoning of the city. But the mayor of the mayor of Buffalo in a recent police brutality case based on this uh, protest, he, uh, an elderly man at the age of 70 was pushed down by two police officers who have recently been charged. The mayor said that this man agitated uh, and, and instigated. Instigated what? For an elderly to be thrown on the ground forcefully to the point where he's bleeding from his ear? Let me get back to my story. They put me on the curb and now I'm sitting there in cuffs. People driving past. Imagine the humiliation. Put yourself in that situation. People are driving past, driving past. Finally, the chief comes. They sit there and they're talking about you from a distance. You can't hear them, but they're talking about you, making you feel like nothing. The, the chief comes over. He says, uh, yeah, what, what do you want to do? Or he said something like, do you still want to report it? That's what it is, he said, actually. Do you still want to report it? I said, yeah, I still want to report it. He said, all right, you're going to jail tonight. 
put me in the back of the car. Now listen to this. I'm in the back of the car with a stranger because I saw something wrong happening to him. And I said, we can't watch this stuff happen. We can't passively sit in our houses from our windows, eating popcorn saying, man, that's tough. Ooh. Tweeting about it. We have to be active. And now I'm in the back of the car. You know what that young man says? He's like, why? I said, I'm a Muslim, man. I'm a Muslim, bro. And what they were doing to you was wrong. He's like, man, you didn't have to do that. I was like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. They take me to, it's not done. They take me downtown for booking you. They sit you in this room. Every cop that walks in looks at you like you're trash because you're nothing. You're a criminal now. Then they take you, they strip search you. They check every cavity of your body, every cavity. I've yet to do anything. And then finally they say, well, you can be released for the night. Go, leave. Leave where? Are you going right, to drop me back at home? <laughs> what do you mean leave? You pick me up from my house. You want to take me back? Call an Uber? No, no, just go back. The ironic thing is I had to break the law to get back home. I had to jump the train. <laughs> Subhanallah. Could have got arrested leaving the police station. Subhanallah. The point I'm trying to highlight, brothers and sisters, is that police brutality against the black community is alive and well in 2020. It is alive and well and mass incarceration. I need you. I need our community to study American history and study what's going on in our country. And this is what Ustad Fatima is going to talk about as well. But you have to study what's going on. 